Hi there, this is David and welcome to the Top 10 Worst RPG Dungeons Game Boy Advance Edition. The Game Boy Advance wasn't really around for all that long. It came out in 2001 and pretty much kept me company between classes while I was in college. By the time that I graduated, I left the poor old Game Boy Advance in the dust too. The DS was already out in 2004, and while it was supposed to be a third pillar, that never happened. Instead, the poor JRPG juggernaut was replaced wholesale. The system had a ton of great RPGs in that short time span, though. So let's take a walk down memory lane and revisit some of those dungeons that we love to hate. Number 10. Luffy of the Ruins of Lore, The Ancient Cave I've tried so hard to like this game, but I just can't. It's the only one in the franchise that I've yet to beat. It's so grind-heavy and the story's so boring that it just puts me to sleep, but... I digress. Let's get to their bastardized version of the Ancient Cave. I mean, they ruined everything else in this game. Why should the Ancient Cave be any different? First of all, only your hero Elden and his disc monster can enter the cave, which makes the battles that you have to do in here drag on forever and a day. And worst of all, Elden doesn't revert to level 1, which really is the cave's biggest flaw. Unlike other games in the series where you could enter the Ancient Cave at any time and receive useful items from it, entering the cave early on here is practically a death trap. This is because you don't level up within the dungeon itself, and the floors have predetermined levels that Elden should be at, and of course, the bottommost floors require level 35+, plus, so it's barely worth entering before the end game. In addition, if you die, you'll lose all of the items that you obtained within the dungeon as well as any items that you took with you and all of your equipment, effectively scaring off any attempts to try the cave before you're ready. And once you are ready for this, don't you want to just beat the damn game? Number 9. All the Final Fantasy ports and their crummy bonus dungeons. Normally, I don't include ports on these lists, nor do I include bonus dungeons either, but these pissed me off so much that I just had to make an exception. It is my list after all. The bonus dungeons all open up at relatively the same time, either right before the final boss fight or right afterwards when you clear the game. Once you've beaten the game though, is there really any purpose to go back to a bonus dungeon? Do you really need all the extra levels and equipment? No, you don't. And what's the payoff for spending hours upon hours in these huge labyrinthine bonus dungeons? Nothing really! Just incredibly long fights with bosses who have HP totals in the millions. There's no added story or character development whatsoever. Call me crazy, but if you're going to do a lazy port and add bonus dungeons as the only incentive to buy the game, at least make them relative to the plot, or better yet, have them sprinkled in naturally throughout the course of the game, and also make them flesh out the characters that we all know and love, not this lazy, Use recycled assets to plop together an uninspired dungeon at the very end of the game so our super fans feel like they have to buy the game again thing that they did. Number 8. Oriental Blue, Kuroyume Castle. Here's a game that I'm sure many of you have never heard of. It's from the Tengei Makyao series that has never officially left Japan, but two games, this and Tengei Makyao Zero for the SNES half translation patches. Unlike the more traditional Tengei Makyao Zero, Oriental Blue plays much more similarly to the open world saga series, with different stories depending on what you do and where you go as well as which gender you choose at the beginning of the game. But that's enough about that. Let's talk about the dungeon. That's what we're all here for. Throughout the castle there are switches that reveal hidden paths as well as just out and out invisible walkways that you have to cross to proceed. Also, at predetermined points there are multiple times that you're forced into a trifecta of fixed encounters. This is in addition to the standard random encounters that the game employs, and, just as the icing on the cake, once you clear the dungeon, it falls into the abyss. So good luck getting any treasures that you may have missed the first time around. Number 7. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, The Sky Pillar As we all know by now, I hate water dungeons, so while I was tempted to lambast all those annoying water routes in these games, I decided to hold myself back. Instead, we're going to focus on a tower in the middle of those water routes. The Sky Pillar is a royal pain in the ass. However, thankfully, it's optional. Essentially, as you climb the tower, you'll notice that the floors are all cracked, and if you walk on them normally, 
you're going to fall through to the previous floor, so you need the mock bike skill to pass. Using this skill here wouldn't be such a pain, except that there's also boulders blocking your path at every turn, and you have to have lightning reflexes to stop at the exact point that you need in order to proceed. There's one particular point where you have to stop in the middle of a bunch of cracks to purposely fall down to the previous floor to go through a central door that you can't get to otherwise. I can't imagine how many complaints they must have received to change it and make it easier in the Emerald version. Number 6. Mother 3, The Sea Floor I love Mother 3. In fact, I think it's the best game on the system, but that doesn't mean that it's not without its flaws. Chapter 3 is a long, dull slog that breaks the pacing of the game, and I would have included it here, but it's not really a dungeon. But the sea floor is, so let's talk about that. This is one of those underwater dungeons where you have a time limit denoted by your oxygen level in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. If you run out, you thankfully won't drown, but you'll be sent back to the beach, no matter how far you may have gone, and you have to start the whole place over again. Hysterically, your air supply can be replenished by oxygen machines, which resemble mermen with giant lips who give you a French kiss to restore your air. The game cuts you no slack here. If you hesitate for a second or make one wrong turn, get ready to start over. If you want to get all the treasure, and you know that we all do, you're going to have to collect them one by one, because you have such little oxygen that you're going to have to go back to the merman after each and every chest. Number 5. Boktai, The Sun is in Your Hands, Azure Sky Tower The Azure Sky Tower starts out 12 floors tall, but adds 3 floors every time you complete it, eventually culminating at 99 floors, and you have to start from the first floor every time you climb it. Also, every 4th floor you have to fight a difficult boss. I've never personally gone up this tower because, quite frankly, I value my sanity. But I did the math, and that's a grand total of 1,665 floors. To make matters worse, to actually make it to the top, you have to collect all seven emblems, one of which you can only get by linking your Game Boy up to your friend's Game Boy, who also owns this game. In other words, you're never going to find anyone who bought this game too, so you're never going to make it up this godforsaken tower. Also, to add insult to injury, you can't save when you're inside, and you can't leave until you clear all the floors either. And of course, the floors are randomly generated. We all know how much that thrills me. Thank god this poorly planned out, poorly designed, and just downright unfun tower is completely optional. Number 4. Sigma Star Saga – The Forgotten Planet I guess it's called The Forgotten Planet because they forgot to playtest this stage or put it through any quality controls whatsoever because this planet is buggy as hell. Killing a specific enemy last causes the battle to go in, into an unwinnable state and the only way out is to reset. So be prepared to save after every single battle. Also, the stages are pretty narrow at points, which makes it literally impossible to fit your larger ships into these tight corridors. And the less time you have to spend here, the better. Then there's the boss stage, where you're sent flying at warp speed through those same narrow corridors, crashing into every single wall in your way. The frustration factor is just through the roof. Finally, after you've finished all this painful garbage, you have an escape sequence to go through, with three minutes to get off the planet before it blows. This wouldn't be too bad if it weren't for the heavy fog impeding your vision, and yes, you still have to fight the glitched battles on the way out, too. Number 3. Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga – Teehee Valley Here I had a choice between Joke's End and Teehee Valley, and in the end it went to the escort mission because at least Joke's End is an actual dungeon that tests your skills in a reasonable way, even though it never seems to end. Teehee Valley, while short, is full of some BS that the game doesn't even tell you. Basically, Princess Toadstool is off getting kidnapped every 5 seconds and you have to protect her. But she doesn't follow you around obediently, instead she wanders off to wherever her dainty little heart desires, which is mostly straight into the paths of the Goombas, who promptly kidnap her. But that's not the worst of it. If you go off the screen for a split second, she gets kidnapped. If you hit the loading zone before she does, she's kidnapped. Even if you clear all the enemies on the entire screen and leave her sight, she's still kidnapped! It doesn't help that she's unbearably slow, too. No wonder there's so many Mario games. 
Princess Toadstool just gets kidnapped at every turn. Number two, Golden Sun 2, The Lost Age, Heirs Rock. Ankle Ruins is a close second, but Heirs Rock is where casual playthroughs go to die. The dungeon consists of two parts, climbing the outside of the rock, and then traversing the insides. Separately, each of these parts are about as long as a normal dungeon. Together, though, it could take you upwards of three hours to get through this place without a guide. For such an early game dungeon, the amount of puzzles here is astronomical. You have moving pillars, flying around in tornadoes, using whirlwinds to clear boulders and sand, walking tightropes, and jumping on platforms all while being harassed by random encounters. And I'm actually going to leave you with a quote from the official Golden Sun Wiki, because you know it's bad when the super fans of the game are complaining about a dungeon on their own wiki page. It's no exaggeration to label this location notorious. In spite of it being explored early on in the Lost Age, Heirs Rock is the most massive, time-consuming, dungeon-style location in the Golden Sun series. To give an idea of its scale, the first part of the dungeon is to climb the mountain's puzzle-heavy maze-like exterior from its base to its top portion, and this portion is longer and more involved than most dungeons in the original Golden Sun. Then, in the interior portion, the expansive layout is effectively designed to be two intertwining dungeon paths, each one about as long as the exterior portion to complete. It's a common topic on Golden Sun community boards and forums to comment on the length of this dungeon. And finally, number one, Mega Man Battle Network, The Power Plant. This could very well be the absolute worst dungeon ever made, not just on the Game Boy Advance, but for all time. The amount of gimmicks this place has stacked on top of each other is astronomical. First, and the worst, just about the entire place is invisible, leading you to get lost constantly. And Mega Man's HP, which normally recovers slowly over time, will not do so here once the battery dips below a certain level. So you're blacked out, lost, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, not restoring your HP, and still getting into horrid random battles, and you can't jack out of the dungeon if you're low on supplies. It's just one huge middle finger. All that's bad enough, but I haven't gotten to the worst part, the battery puzzles. These puzzles require you to create pathways by lighting up bulbs using batteries. Sounds simple enough, but it's not, because there's always more boxes than batteries, and you get no hints whatsoever about which boxes are correct for batteries, and you can only test a battery on a box twice before it runs out of power and you have to run back to the recharger station over and over again, in the dark, all while being raped by the encounters. And you have to continue solving the same battery box puzzle over and over again, only each time there's more boxes to deal with and the battery charger is further and further away. But Capcom saved the biggest FU for the very end though. When you go in to fight Elect Man, it's an unwinnable battle and the World 3 takes the Elect program anyway. The whole place was for nothing. Well, that's it for the top 10. Hope that you guys enjoyed this, and the DS and PSP are coming up next. What are your worst dungeons on the Game Boy Advance? Did you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments, and as always, have a good day.